Hey, it's me again. Is it you again? If so, welcome. It's good to have you back. Is it not you again and you're here for the first time? Welcome, it's good to have you. What I would like to do in this video is take a deep dive into a question that Sandy's orchids had a while ago. Sandy asked, why do new growths not open up? They grow, but the leaf doesn't open up. I did answer that question in the comments. However, me thinks that this is a great question, especially seeing as orchids grow new growths no matter our season and things can influence the development of a new growth at any point in time. So why does this happen? What can we do to avoid growth not developing to the max? And is it even that important to have new growth developing fully? Are there downsides to leaves not opening up fully? Why is this important? What are the downsides if this were to happen to one or several of your orchids? Lots of thoughts that I would like to elaborate on in this video, so let's talk about it. The question I posed, why is this important, may seem self-explanatory. The simple answer being that if a new leaf on a new growth isn't able to fully open, the orchid may not be able to bloom. The spikes get caught, the buds stay pinched within the leaf, and there goes the blooming season of the orchid until the next new growth grows. Okay, so some of us accept a failed blooming as long as the orchid is doing well, but the fact that sometimes growths do not have the capacity to open their leaves fully, or even partially for that matter, can pose a multitude of problems which inadvertently then can create a domino effect leading to possible detrimental outcomes for our orchids. If a new leaf cannot open fully, it can lead to rot issues depending on how high the humidity is, how cold the temperatures are, or how little airflow there is to prevent rot from occurring in the tightly pinched area where the leaf is caught. No matter the season or the grow environment, rot is going to take a new growth out very, very quickly and the cell structure in the area where the leaf is pinched and won't release is tender and weak, so moisture pooling in that zone is not a good idea long term. Also, the opportunity for a pest infestation to manifest itself in that tightly pinched area is very high. Same reason, weak and tender cell structure is like an open buffet with bright lights and a big arrow pointing to the area, attracting pests to settle down and help themselves. It is super difficult to get into those tight spaces to remove the pests if they have settled there without also doing damage to the new leaf. Garlic alcohol works to stop the pests from spreading, but the bites, the nicks to the cuticle of the leaf remain and up to a certain point are and will remain open wounds, which in turn can invite rot to kick in. So the question, what are the dangers of a leaf not opening on a new growth was not what Sandy asked. I wanted to start this video out with this information so that we don't walk past the orchid, if that were the case, and think, oh well, maybe next time. If this were to happen to any of your orchids, even on Cidiums that have the concertina leaves, it is a sign that something's not quite right. And with that being said, here are the reasons why some of my new growths have leaves that do not open fully, what they look like, and why. So before I get into those thoughts, if you're already thinking of possible examples in your collection and are happy that this question is being addressed, would you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this? You see, when reading the description under every video, you will find my mission statement for this channel and that states, make this channel work for you. Questions like this one that Sandy asked in the comments are answered in the comments, but if it is something that could be of use to many orchid growers, then I will make a video specifically to answer the question where I can elaborate in greater detail and show examples of what I am talking about. I appreciate your vote of confidence as well as the support. Thank you so much. And videos like these also prompt more questions specific to your case, your orchid, and for that I have a need help video, which I will link in the description. Ask away in the comments and should I need to delve deeper into your case, I will link the form in the comments for you to fill out and we can take it from there. Now I have three orchids that are prone to leaves getting pinched, not opening properly, and I feel that it happens no matter what I do. So my prime example for many of the reasons new leaves don't open up is my Prostechia garciana alba. Reasons for leaves not opening properly on this orchid are, and these will apply to your cases as well, dehydration. 
What do I mean by that? The roots are not getting into the media quick enough. If an orchid is a climber and you have a very dry climate like mine, no humidity, etc., then any new roots of growth that do not get into the media and hydrate quickly are going to stop growing. While the new growth still does its thing being supplied by the energy in the growth from the back and the root system from those growths. However, the energy being used up for the new growth and new roots, sometimes multiple new growths on one lead, is exponential because the rest of the orchid is also needing to supply hydration to the older established growths. So the new growth does not develop fully and leaves get pinched. Dehydration also applies if the root system is not functioning to capacity, is dead or non-existent, as in rescue orchids that grow new growth while not having a root system to work with just yet. In the case of Oncidiums, the concertina leaves will show for exactly the same reason. Somewhere along the line of growing the new growth, there was an interruption in watering or the root system was not functioning properly. And until the root system isn't able to take up water, the ridges will be there and then stop and the leaf develops properly once the root system starts to do its job. But you will be able to tell in the growth of the leaf when the distress occurred with the orchid due to the root system not being able to take up all the moisture it needed because those concertina leaves will then remain for the duration of the life span of the leaf. And then we go to lack of humidity. <laughs> In my super dry climate, the lack of ambient humidity will cause a new growth to not develop the leaf properly without getting pinched because the sheath that is growing around the pseudobulb is a tough one, even while green and fresh. Some orchids have several layers of pseudobulb sheaths and they are tough for a reason. They protect the cells within before the pseudobulb forms as it forms and once it matures. Seeing as these sheaths are so tough and the leaves that come out at the top of them on many orchids, the leaves stay closed to a degree because there is no counterbalance of humidity to soften the sheaths allowing the leaf to push through. In the case of Oncidiums, the concertina leaves will show for exactly the same reason, even if the root system is happy and healthy. But if the ambient humidity is too high, the outer sheaths will be tougher than the tender cells that are trying to develop a leaf. They will impede the leaf from growing out evenly. Usually it is then up to us to notice this happening and then we can take measures to remove the green sheath to release the leaf, or at least slice into it to release the leaf, without removing the sheath. In the case of low humidity, you will also get spikes that are caught within the pseudobulb and leaf joint, so keep an eye out for that. Now you might say, well, up the humidity and problem solved. While that is absolutely correct, it's not always feasible, because in my case, I can boost humidity by misting the orchid or the surface of the media. However, we're talking about new growths, new cells, tender cells that are not fully established yet, and well, too much humidity or water getting caught within the layers that new growths have as they develop is going to result in rot, as you can see with my Garciana here. And this orchid is not getting misted superficially. Some orchids can handle surface misting while growing new growths and some just won't be able to handle it. It all depends on the orchid we are dealing with. While it is a shame that this happens to new growths, in my case, it is sometimes best to cut the losses as long as the majority of the new growths are doing well. In my situation, excessive misting will only compound the problem. So, even though this orchid lives outdoors in the summer, has high airflow and low humidity, I lose growths because... Happy sap! Prostechias and Coilostylus are a genus that are prone to a lot of happy sap, as are others, and for that reason, I have my Coilostylus ciliare variety of Stedii here as well. While happy sap is a wonderful thing, it proves to us that the orchid is getting hydrated, it is sticky stuff. Sticky in combination with layers upon layers upon layers of protective green sheaths around a new growth is not a good recipe for a new growth to develop normally or release the leaves. Everything can be perfect, but it is the happy sap that glues the leaf to the sheath out of which it is growing, and for that reason, the leaf cannot open properly. Ironically, Orchids like these do live in areas that have high humidity with high airflow and lots of rain when they are in active growth, and yet the new growths won't rot out in nature. Simulate that in cultivation and we may experience the total opposite. Misting is not the same as a good rain shower, 
and orchids like these may generally grow upside down in nature which allows the rain to wash past the new growths not penetrating the tight layers of the sheaths and wash away any excessive happy sap my misting or any high humidity that produces a wet environment around the new growth stays and seeps into the tight layers mixes with the happy sap which is mainly sugars and bacteria thrives on sugars and boom the new growth deteriorates within itself and if that doesn't happen the connection between the new leaf and that sticky sheath is compromised anything that stops the flow of hydration and nutrients to the new leaf while it is forming will cause it to not open properly when that happens with my garcinia alba once again i take my losses as long as the orchid is doing great for the most part but in the case of my coilostylus orchids i will take a very sharp knife and slice the still green sheath where it reaches above the pseudobulb, reaching into the leaf and holding the leaf, and I will peel it away from the connection point of the leaf to the pseudobulb to allow airflow to access that joint and subsequently hopefully have done that in time for the leaf to open properly. While it is also possible to go in with a clean wet cloth and wipe some of the excess happy sap away, first of all, that is a little bit impossible for me and my Garciana Alba. And secondly, if you look at my Coilostylus ciliare, the brown sheath that you see stuck to the pseudobulb and the neck of the new leaf. While that was growing, I cut it away. While the sheath was still green, only peeled back enough to get airflow into the joint between the pseudobulb and the leaf. And I've been wiping that area also with a clean cloth because, you know, let's clean the pseudobulb. And yet, the brown sheath is so stuck to that leaf. I'm just leaving it because I may do damage to the leaf just because I want the sheath off. So you see how sticky some of the happy sap is and what problems it can cause in a domino effect. And then there are the cute seedlings. Ah, the seedlings. Sometimes we get some seedlings in and they are difficult to keep hydrated without risking any rot. So in the case of seedlings, it is possible that sometimes a new growth will come up strong, but the leaf is caught as there is a lack of strength within the entire seedling as it is so young for the leaf to open and develop properly. Only time will take care of that and unless other environmental or culture influences are not the reason, then it may only happen on one occasion because by that experience we will learn what to do to prevent it from happening with the next new growth. And I hope that this video will also play its part to be of help to avoid it from happening to any of your seedlings if it has happened before that a leaf gets pinched. Now I can hear you say lack of calcium, lack of calcium, don't forget to say lack of calcium. So let's address that. While lack of calcium can also be a cause of leaves not opening properly, usually there will be no leaf on a new growth if the problem is lack of calcium. You see, lack of calcium will weaken a new growth and with that the growth itself is in jeopardy and can fail within the early stages of its development. The rot that kicks in because of lack of calcium is also a result of the rot that kicks in because of all the reasons I've just mentioned. Calcium strengthens new cells right out of the gate, but it can only do that if everything is great in the pot and the root system is functioning. No amount of calcium added to a pot with dead roots in it is going to make a new growth develop with a shiny new unpinched leaf. But if the root system is functioning appropriately, it is definitely advisable to give the orchid as much calcium as needed. As a leaf grows, it will show other signs of calcium deficiency, but not opening properly is not one of them. However, if you would like to add anything that I've mentioned in this video based on my observation within my collection, please continue the dialogue in the comments. Any expertise and experience is very, very welcome. I am going but what I can speak on based on what happens with my orchids and the conclusions I can draw from that after a few years of tinkering to improve the outcome for the next new growths. So keep the conversation going in the comments. We can also dive into the lack of light, the lack of a balanced fertilizer, inadequate temperatures for the orchid in question. But for the most part, I think that these factors would not pinch a leaf. Instead, the new growth would not develop to its full potential 
it may look a little on the dark green side, the orchid would not bloom, etc. So the general culture not being quite right is something I would delve into with you if you had a specific case. As mentioned previously, need help video is in the description. But there is one positive thing that I would like to mention to end the video. The one positive thing that we can bank on despite everything, if we have the leaf intact, pinched but intact, the one positive thing we can bank on is the new growth will grow a new root system, regardless of the fact that the leaf at the top is pinched. At least there's that. <laughs> we may not get the blooms, we may be disappointed because the look of the orchid is not pristine, etc. But in order for us to get another chance of getting it right the next go around, we need the orchid to have a healthy root system. So that new growth that did not grow as well as we had hoped, it will grow new roots and we will have a chance to correct what went wrong in the future. For me, that is the most important thing and I hope that this video will give you that same feeling of lesson learned, bring on the next growth and just watch. It's going to be glorious. <laughs> Isn't that what this hobby is all about? <laughs> Maybe next time. Looking to the future. So I hope you didn't mind seeing orchids that weren't in bloom, but these are the ones that have pinched leaves for all the reasons I've mentioned above and they've taught me everything that I've just shared in this video. And I sincerely hope that this video was helpful even without all the bells and whistles. Know that I appreciate you for watching to the end. Thank you so, so much. Have yourself a fabulous day. As always though, I attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.